showed you how I've made these really cute vases out of Barilla sauce jars. You can make them out of any mason jar, any jar. You can make them out of larger jars or smaller jars with the decoupage. And the first thing you do is you just paint your glass jar. And what I do is I just use a cosmetic sponge or you can use one of those dauber sponges and any type of paint. They can be an acrylic paint, they can be a chalk paint, and you give it a couple of coats. And then what we use to decoupage, I use this deco art napkin decoupage. So I've got my jar painted with two coats. I'm going to use this napkin this time on this guy, and you'll see the napkin I used on this one. I may use two napkins and put some Easter eggs on it. We'll see when I get this part of it done. So what you do is you take your napkin out, which I have, and you cut out. I cut out the strip and I cut out the bunny. Then you peel the layers off the bunny. Now you look if you have a two-ply or if you have a one-ply nap or a three-ply napkin, excuse me. And this is a two-ply napkin. So it's going to be very thin. Now find your seam in the drawer because you don't want that in the front. And then you position your piece on there. Because this is very thin and we're using the napkin decoupage, we don't have to decoupage under it, which makes it easier for us. So we open our, so we take our napkin decoupage on our brush and We start feathering it out. I start in the center like that on you know on the, towards the sides and the bottom there just to hold it in place and then be careful not to touch your design when you're doing it, but you just feather it out and don't be afraid. You might think, oh my gosh, if I have too much of this it's going to disintegrate create the napkin. It's just the opposite. It will let your brush flow. If you have too little, that's when you're going to tear your napkin. Okay, and find the right pressure. You don't want too strong of a pressure, but not too light. You'll find your way, just feel it. And again, start with a lighter touch and then just feather it out there. And I'll show you how we'll smooth out any wrinkles with Saran Wrap. So don't even worry about it so much. Here, like just try to smooth those wrinkles with your brush by just going upwards here and here. And then we'll get, I'll show you the Saran Wrap method. You can use saran wrap and you can even use a plastic baggie and put your hand in it. But the saran wrap is good if you want to pull something tight first. Okay, so you take a piece of, I think you call this cling wrap over in across the pond. And you can just put it on like that and bring it around and then pull it really taut so that it really wraps that piece, right? Really taut. And then when it's taut, you can go with your finger gently and smooth out your piece. The saran wrap will have done a lot of it for you. You smooth out your piece. The cling wrap has done a lot of the work for you. And then you pull that make sure if you go up this ridge here you really go through and make sure your piece is smooth and then be careful lift it up carefully and check you can also use a um, 
a ball of cling wrap, but like if you want to get there, you can. And you just want to go in, see like this, smooth away, you can usually smooth most of everything away. You don't have to get too obsessive because you don't want to destroy your piece, but, and some of it will not even really be very noticeable when drying. So you have that like that, right? Now up here on his ear, before I try to do that anymore and try to straighten that out, I'm going to put a little bit of the medium because I don't want to be doing that dry. And then I'm just going to smooth up with the saran wrap. Okay, and So we have the bunny. Now, what we want to do is get our gingham piece that you're going to put around the bottom. So this piece is going to go on the bottom. Now you can work it in sections or you could do the whole thing. I am going to work this in a section like this first just because it's easier to work with around a curved surface. So I've got to pull the, the layer off. This over here is going to start this. Okay, so let me see what it'll take to go from seam to seam seam. All right, I'm going to do these two sections first. I get my scissor. Okay, and I'm just going to not touch my bunny. That's important. And coming up there, this will fold under. Okay, so we can leave it out and we can sand it off. Show you that. I'm just going to start here, kind of just to get it into position. See that kind of came up a little bit, so I just picked it up, it's forgiving, and pulled it over. And then just keep going. Don't worry about the wrinkles, we'll get them out in a second. Just make sure your entire design there is saturated. Now, grab our saran wrap.
And under that, we can smooth it out. And then we can go ahead with our finger with saran wrap and do the same thing. Okay, so we just smooth that out now. We just have that little bit to take care of. So, we want to bring this up. Now this is going to go right here and here. So I'm going to to cut this and then just do the same kind of dry match it up and there's a little bit of wetness here so that's good because that can help you position your piece and then just see And the nice thing about using napkins is that they're so thin, they kind of just meld into your piece and end up looking like paint. So, you can usually even overlap slightly with some designs and they'll meld right on there. And especially with something like this being in the back, you won't even notice if you have a slight overlap. Okay, so again with our saran wrap, cling wrap, whatever you want to call it, I'm just going to smooth it out. Okay, and up on top I'm going to use some of that, some of the, I'm going to put it like this because I just don't want it to dry. Now I may go along with some eggs, I may put another bunny on the back side. I'm not sure, but I want to use some crackle, so I might grab another bunny and put him on the back. Yeah. I accidentally touched that. I didn't even notice that. I lifted the napkin up, but I was able to go right over that because it was just... So you can fix up little things. I'm going to want to, you know, make sure this is sealed up here on the top. I didn't have him on there good, so that needed to be done. All right, and I think I am going to put another bunny on the back, so I will cut that and put him on. Let me... Just do that. I don't need the gingham portion. And I will save that because you can make neat textures on other jars and stuff and then paint them. So really, you can use a lot of your napkin. To make it easier, since sometimes it's awkward cutting inside a big napkin, especially if you're trying not to destroy anything else, is to take it out in a blob like this and then just clean it up. And because your vase is the same color as your background, even if you have a little um, of the color left, it's okay. So now we've got to take his second layer off. And some new viewers told me that they want to learn to decoupage, and that's why I'm trying to do some more of these tutorials. You'll see how easy it is. And if you go back to our 
first craft, well not our first craft panel, but our first decoupage craft panel, you could see how frustrated I was the first time because I didn't know a lot of these tricks with the saran wrap and stuff. And it, my stuff still came out good. And even though I thought that night I would never do this again, it's one of my favorite crafts of all time to do. And I used to decoupage only with fabric. But now I have a napkin addiction along with Lisa D and I'm sure others are following suit. You could have worse addictions. Okay. So now what I'll do is I'll carefully grab this and grab it right here. And then I'm going to want to make sure I'm in the middle of my seams. So I've got a seam here and a seam here. So it should be right around here. Snatch over. Okay. Make sure he's on there, nice and straight. Okay, and then we will, I just try to like tack him down on the bottom first. And then, I said it's a little forgiving so that if you need to get him down, reposition him a little bit, you can. Then smooth out. And remember, you'll have a, a back side, so you can always put your best side to the front. Um, but it's very unlikely someone, you know, when you're making something, you know where each little flaw is. Uh, people don't usually inspect your stuff that much. And somebody said to me, oh, it doesn't matter if it's, it should be, uh, if it has to be, Finished is better than perfect or something. And I was like, oh, okay. Try to go in one direction. Like see these little wrinkles, I try to make sure like all the air is out first before I get the saran wrap. And that way it's less work to do with the saran wrap. So I'll just go kind of feather the median, the medium to the side. Try to pull any, make sure that it's completely down. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is get our saran wrap. Ah. Get our saran wrap. And there, there he is on both sides. And then I'll show you how we finish up with the, the ribbon. And it, you know, you could, if you wanted to put some Easter eggs on the side, you could take an Easter egg napkin. I think I'm probably going to leave him. I think I'm probably going to leave it like that. And just have it as a bunny vase. I mean, you could literally have a bunny vase if you collect bunnies, have that out all year round, which for the Easter eggs, you've made it a seasonal design, but I don't know, I really like it. And I will show you more, but I'm gonna go for a walk right now before it gets too late. Bye-bye. Okay, so it's dry. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna seal it because I'm going to use a crackle finish on this for the first time. 
something I've never done, but I first have to seal it. So I'm going to just use a Mod Podge sealer, and I will have all this in my video description. And I'm just going to seal the entire jar. Okay, so. So what we're going to do now is try something brand new. I'm going to try it for the first time right here on camera. And this is the Decor Art Media. And this is a crackle glaze. So what this is going to supposedly do on this sealed vase, right? What I'm going to do is put it all over. And then you put it on in a thick coat. You let it dry. It has little cracks. And then we're going to enhance those cracks with, with this Folk Art Antique. So there was another brand somebody uses, but it's, it's not readily available in the United States. So I had to try this, and I hope that it works just as well. I'm going to open it up. It's a thick water-based. It doesn't smell. It says to put it on thick, okay? So I'm just going, and it says not, it'll self-level, so not to worry about, um, you know, leveling it because you because you don't overbrush it is what it says. Okay, so I'm just going to. So now we're going to want, I want to make sure I have crackling on this part especially. So I want to go ahead and make sure that I have that done well. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to leave it and we'll see what happens, okay? And I didn't use much. Didn't take much to put a thick coat on it. So I'll be back when it dries. Hopefully we have nice good results. All right, so the crackle finish is dry and I'm gonna see if you can see it. Okay, can you, let me see, I've gotta get my glasses. Oh, shoot. So now you'd say, okay, well, I can't really see it as well because it's not defined. And that's why you put either, you know, something to define that crackle. That See how nice that, I don't know, I can't, I don't have my glasses, so I can't see if I, if you can notice the crackle. But, So, what you do is, you use this, and what we can do is just put some of this just on a paper towel, I would say. Like if you've ever tried to distress or put a glaze on like furniture, I've used to use this really bright, bright turquoisey color, and then you'd put this Rust-Oleum transformation thing on it after you'd distress it a little bit and it would antique it really nice. So I've got this. But even in ceramics and stuff, you can do this. So we have our here, right? And I'll just go just lightly. And then I'm just going to, you see how it's, um, and it will accentuate It'll accentuate the cracks in the glaze so it looks anti. So you just uh, kind of put it on and, and rub it off. I think now that I have my glasses, I can see where I'm really supposed to be doing things. Let me just see what this says. Shake well. Immediately remove excess. Clean while wet with soap. Okay, so you should use a brush and then clean the excess. of a little tiny tad of water. And I wonder if I should have got a lighter color. So I'm just gonna I think I need to put some more glaze there um, in order to put 
but I think as I, I'm going to put probably, see how nice that came up there? Have a little more glaze on him. Um, I think you get scared at first, but then it starts to look good, right? I just want to do it all and then um I crackled him here, so I have to. I must have missed him there. This guy didn't get his crackle. So I'm just going to go on and put some. And I think that's going to look really nice. I think I want to get some lighter colors of that stuff too. Now that I know this is, um, but that works really good. I've been looking for what's going to do that finish like that, and now I know. And I think I may add some more of the crackle finish, and then you do it, but I, I do really like that. I think it's going to look really nice when it's done. That's how you do the crackle finish. Well, it looks really nice from a distance. <sighs> Sounds funny, but it does. And this here is, I was worried this was not going to be dark enough. This is, uh, I believe this is walnut. Oh, this is um, bucket brown. 
but I think I do want to get a, a little bit of a lighter color too. Like maybe like a gray if they had it, that would be nice too. All right. So there we go, that's that. Happy with how that turned out. character. These would be nice, um, you know, in your own home for a gift. I just stuck some flowers in them. I didn't do any uh, arrangements or anything. I just stuck some flowers in for just for the picture. But uh, I would, I'm going to arrange them nicer, you know, with more colors and not have those gaps. But I just stuck something in there for the photo. But you'll see how nice they, they look. And two different designs. Same drawer that I started with, you would never guess that is a Barilla sauce drawer. You know, it looks really nice and all the kinds of spring flowers that are going to come in, I mean artificial flowers, that you can put in them to decorate your house. And so I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.